Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential differential equation, a really cool equation. We have y to the power y prime equals e to the power y, where y is a function of x. So our goal is to solve for y and try to express it in terms of x. Now, this problem was posted on Twitter by Professor Nandor. I hope I said it right. Here's his Twitter handle. You can go ahead and check out his Twitter page because it's full of beautiful problems and solutions. So there's also an initial condition, which we can take a look at at the end. If I don't forget, I usually forget these things. But anyways, this is the original problem. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem. There's obviously more than one way to do it. And let's see how we can tackle this. So we have y to the power y prime equals e to the power y. Nice. The base is y on one side and it's the exponent on the right hand side. And then the derivative comes in. So it's really a beautiful mixture of y and y prime. Thank you for the inspiration. One more time, Professor Nandor. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ln both sides. Anytime I see a variable, doesn't matter, x, y, y prime, in the exponent, I'll bring it down. That's my goal. So let's go ahead and ln both sides, right? That's probably not what I was looking for. I was looking for this. Oh, anyways, so I was trying to separate them. I don't know why it didn't work. Uh, I guess it's this one. Oops. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and ln both sides first. Let's do it. Ln this one and ln this one. Great. Now, properties of logs allow us to bring this down. So we can go ahead and bring this to the front. Y prime multiplied by ln y equals y times ln e. But ln e is equal to 1, so we don't have to worry about it. Totally forget about it. This is equal to 1. So now we end up with a simpler equation, hopefully. y prime ln y is equal to y. Okay, and hopefully you know why. Now at this point, this looks like a separable differential equation, doesn't it? Separable differential equation means you can put the y's on one side and the x's on the other side so that you can integrate with respect to each variable and then come up with, hopefully, a good expression. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and replace y prime with dy over dx first. That's what it means. And then we're going to go ahead and multiply this by ln y and that becomes y. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this. I have ln y on the left, y on the right, so I have to bring the y over to the left, and I have to throw away the dx on the other side. So dx goes to the right-hand side, and y comes to the left. So it's going to look like this when I do. ln y over y times dy, because dy is going to stay, equals dx. Fairly simple, right? When you separate the variables, it's awesome, because you can just integrate. That's what we're going to do next. Let's integrate. Notice that the d's tell you with respect to which variable you're going to integrate. So there's no question, right? dy means you're going to integrate with respect to y. dx means you're going to integrate with respect to x. So when you integrate ln y over y, wait a minute. How do you integrate ln y over y, right? Well, we're going to use substitution. That's another cool method that we use. Let's go ahead and do this. Replace ln y with u, or uh, set u equals ln y. And then from here, du, which is the derivative of ln y. And by the way, it's just going to be with respect to y. You got to remember that, right? Because we're basically looking at du over dy, which is going to be 1 over y and then dy. So if you divide both sides by dy, you get du over dy, which is the derivative of u with respect to y. You got to be careful. It's not the derivative of u with respect to x. That will be different. Okay, great. So what does this give me? On the left-hand side, this is u, right? And this is du. So that's awesome because I just got u du. You do. <laughs> okay, you do this one. So when you get an integral like this, it's the same thing as x dx or y dy or z dz. It doesn't matter because the variable is just dummy, right? You can use any variable you want. So, and the integral of x, you should know from power rule, is x squared over 2. Ever, never, ever forget the constant c. 
So this is going to be u squared over 2. But guess what? I'm going to put the constant on the right-hand side. So I'm going to save it for x. You don't need two constants because their difference is also going to be a constant. So this is going to be u squared over 2. And the integral of dx is going to be x. Don't forget the constant. And you're pretty much set. Great. That was easy, right? So here's what you can do. Multiply both sides by 2 to, to isolate u squared. And then if you want, you can replace 2c. Do you see what I see? Replace with another constant like k. And then you get u squared equals 2x plus a constant. What am I going to do with this? What is u? What is wrong with you? No, no, I'm not saying that. What is u? u is... I forgot, what is it? ln y, yes. Okay, great. So u is ln y. So let's go ahead and back substitute. ln y squared equals 2x plus k. This should give you two solutions because when you square root, you know, absolute value is going to kick in. We can put a plus minus sign, so let's do it. ln y from here is going to be plus minus the square root of 2x plus k. Awesome. Now, is that, is that it? We were trying to solve for y, but we ended up with ln y. Let's go ahead and turn this into y. How do you turn ln y into y? It is by using the base e, right? So in other words, e to the power ln y is y. Okay, so let's do it. e to the power both sides. And you'll get the answer. Now, this is going to give you y equals e to the power plus minus the square root of 2x plus k. Now k is a constant and plus minus sign basically is going to give you kind of like two different branches and then uh, you, depending on the value of you know k so on and so forth you can do this. But remember there was an initial condition right? Let's go back and look at what it was. y of 0 is i. Great. y of 0 is i. This is basically going to give you some particular solutions. That way you can determine k. So let's go ahead and, of course, you can write this as y of x because it's a function of x. Now let's go ahead and replace x with 0 everywhere. This is going to give us y of 0 equals e to the power plus minus the square root of 2 times 0 is 0. So it's just going to be the square root of k. And we want this to be i. Make sense? Great. Now, here's the, the good part. You can write the i as a complex number, and I'm going to try to avoid some of the complexities or the complications of complex numbers and keep it real simple. I hope you don't mind. And just write this as e to the power i times pi over 2. Awesome. And guess what? This allows you to find the k value from here. <laughs> Is k positive or negative? That's a good question. But plus minus square root of k equals i pi over 2 allows you to square both sides and define the k value and that way you can plug it in and if you square both sides you're going to get k equals i squared pi squared over 4 which is negative pi squared over 4 because i squared is equal to negative 1 by definition all right so now when you go back and plug it in you're going to get y of x can be expressed as e to the power plus minus the square root of 2x plus k which is minus pi squared over 4 for this particular case. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.